Hey everyone, this is Dave from the Adobe Character Animator team and Firefly is Adobe's AI tool that is allowing creative people all around the world to just make some incredible new stuff and open up all sorts of new creative possibilities. And one of those creative possibilities is creating artwork for a character and then trying to figure out a way to turn it into an animated character. Well, there's no one button process to do that just yet. You could take a character that you've made in Adobe Firefly and then animate it using some basic parameters. So what we're going to do today in this tutorial is show you how to do exactly that. We'll start with a text prompt and then we will move into showing you how to make the eyes move, the mouth move, the body and head move, the arms move, and even add little things like a swaying tail uh, for the back for this tiger character that we're going to make. Um, hopefully it's helpful and we'll let you bring your own AI creations to life. If that sounds good to you, let's get started. All right, so let's start with the Adobe Firefly website and we're gonna use text to image here. So I went to firefly.adobe.com and I'm gonna click text to image. And I came up with this prompt earlier that I'm just gonna paste in here. A cartoon tiger wearing a red shirt and blue pants isolated on a green background. Let's go ahead and generate that and see what happens. Okay, so we got some pretty good results here. I've got a couple that have a, a few tails here or feet um, in the back that they didn't quite get it. But overall, I'm happy with the quality of how things are looking. And of course, I could add more prompts. Um, they have this new suggestions thing down here, which is great for, you know, if you start typing, it will give you suggestions of different ideas um, that might make things a little bit easier. But for right now, um, I'm kind of liking this guy right here down here. So I'm gonna click on to him and uh, I'm going to go ahead and click share and I'm going to download him. All right, so I've opened up my character here in Photoshop and the problem is this is a static flat image. It's just one layer and in Character Animator, we really want our character separated into parts, right? So I want the pupils to be able to move. I want the mouth to be able to move. I want, uh, you know, not a background and all these different things and so I'm gonna to have to do a little bit of Photoshop surgery to get this character even just doing some basic movements and then moving on to some other stuff as well. So let's first get rid of this background. So I could do, do remove background or select subject. I'm gonna to go to select subject down here and this is gonna give me a little more control. See right here, I noticed that the tail wasn't completely selected as I wanted. So I'm just gonna use this um, polygonal lasso tool. Uh, I'm gonna hold down shift as I click just to make sure I add this part in as well. And now the tail is part of that. And so now with all of this uh, selected, I could uh, either press delete and that's gonna get rid of my character, but probably what I wanna do is do the inverse instead. So I'm gonna do this uh, inverse selection here, this little icon here and press delete. And now everything else has been deleted except for my character, which is looking pretty good. There's a little artifact here I noticed, so sometimes it's not gonna be perfect, so I'm just gonna use the erase tool to get rid of it. But right now, this character is looking pretty great. Like now I've got an isolated character that's ready to go. All right, so the very first thing I wanna do is I wanna separate the head from the body because I want the head to be its own separate piece. So what I'm gonna do is again, use my polygonal lasso tool over here, and I'm gonna jump in here uh, zoom in a little bit and I'm just gonna get really close and try to do the best job I can clicking and isolating the head. Um, there's a bunch of different methods you could use to do this. I mean, Photoshop has, right, like a hundred different ways to do the exact same thing. But for me, I've always liked the precision that I get from this particular tool. And uh, I just kind of wanna get the head as a separate element that I can then put in my head group to be able to do some more advanced stuff with. So, okay, I'm gonna click around. Now I've got kind of the, the hardest part was where it connects to the head, uh, connects to the body, I should say. Now that the head is selected, I'm gonna press Command X uh, to uh, get rid of it and then Command Shift V to paste it in place. And now what you'll see is over here, I've got my head and my body as two isolated parts. So this is great. So now my head is a piece that, you know, I could do rotations or other things with if I wanted to. And now for the body, I probably want this to not be just a gap here. I wanna have a little bit more to it. So I uh, have something that the head actually connects to. So what I'm gonna do is just, again, using the polygonal lasso tool, do something like this, and let's just use generative fill to, and without, we need a prompt, and just click generate. And this is gonna just add something here 
in the background for me, hopefully looking similar to this blue and red shirt. Now, this is normally gonna be behind the head, and so it's really not that super important, like that this has like skin colors here, um, because the head is gonna be, you know, blocking most of that. But just in case it, um, you know, this were to move around and rotate, at least I've got something beneath it. And I can, of course, you know, change the coloring to be orange or, you know, fit the character a little bit better if I wanted to. I'm gonna go ahead and select my two layers here, and I'm going to merge layers, right click them, and put them together just so it's all together as one. I don't need them as separate layers. Usually in Character Animator, the more we can simplify things, the better. Okay, so let's get some basic structure happening over here now. So I'm gonna select the new uh, group uh, and press it three times down here. And we're gonna call this plus tiger at the top. Remember plus is kind of our uh, secret code for making same independent. And then I'm gonna call this head and body I'm gonna put my head and body groups inside my main tiger group. So now I've got a tiger uh, group that has head and body inside. And now I'm just gonna put each of these pieces where they belong. So now the head group has the head and the body has the body. And this is exactly what we want for Character Animator to have these two separate pieces. Okay, so with only doing this so far, without doing any other details, I'm gonna go ahead and save this and import it into Character Animator to see how it looks. All right, so I'm in a new Character Animator project. I'm gonna go over here to File, Import. I'm going to find that Tiger PSD file and import it in. And then let's go ahead with my Tiger selected, click this Add to New Scene button to bring it in. Okay, so now already I've got some head motion because the head group was called head and it's moving everything, but it's bringing the body along for the ride. Um, I'm probably gonna scale this character down a little bit to fit a little bit better here using the scale in the transform area. And uh, now I kinda wanna just pin the feet to the ground and do some basic rigging stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and double click on my tiger uh, character over here so it brings me into rig mode. And then let's select the head group and bring the uh, origin down here, just dragging it down to the neck where it would connect. And then for my body group, I'm going to add the fixed handles down here, the pin tool, and maybe add just a couple of fixed handles over there. Let's try that, going back to record mode. And now, okay, I have my character kind of moving back and forth and keeping the feet pinned to the ground. Now there's obviously more things I wanna do. I don't like the tail just kind of staying there. I wish it had a little bit more movement. I want the arms to be able to move. I want the eyes to move. I want the mouth to move. But hey, as a start, and if I just had like a background character, for example, like I have a zoo scene and there's characters in the background, this might be enough to have, you know, just some basic movement for a character. So, uh, you know, within five, 10 minutes, something like that, you can have a pretty easy moving static character for the background. But okay, starting off with this, this is a good start, but let's head back to Photoshop to do a little more fine tune uh, surgery to get some other parts moving. All right, so let's start with the head. Uh, that's the most expressive part of a character, so I really want this to, to work well. And I'm gonna focus on the eyes and the mouth as my main things. I could do eyebrows and you know other things as well, but for now, those are kind of the two things I wanna focus on. So let's start with the eyes. Um, right now, the eyes are part of the character, and I kind of want them to be their own uh, thing. So what I'm gonna do is make sure this character is selected here, and I'm going to isolate out the eyes. So let's go in here and again I'm just going to kind of select things and take this part of the bluish eyes or bluish green part of the eyes and I'm going to select it here and I'm going to press Command X on Mac, Control X on Windows and uh, then Command Shift V to paste it into place. And so now I've got this basic eyeball um, that's showing up here. Now you probably noticed that there's like an outline that you can see around this that doesn't look that great. So what I'm gonna do is select this care, this eye and press uh, Command T on that, Control T on Windows to give it this free transform uh, thing. And then I'm just gonna make it a little bit bigger. I'm holding down Option to make it move from the center uh, to make it a little bit better like that. And let's go like that. So now it's a little bit, uh, um, bigger than things, but if I dragged it behind the eye, it's gonna look okay. It's gonna look, you know, like it is its own individual piece. All right, let's take an isolated look at this eye. And I really, the pupil is kind of looking weird, right? Like I don't think this is the thing that I want to actually have moving around. So what I'm gonna do is go to my clone stamp tool 
over here. And I'm gonna pick a nice size brush, probably with a little bit of a blur to it on the edges. And let's bring this in. And when I want to sample something, if you've never used the clone stamp tool before, I'm gonna hold down Option on Mac, I believe it's Alt on Windows, and click a sample area, and then move it and click in another area to kind of paste. And I'm gonna hold Option again, and then do it a few times. And I just kind of keep sampling with Option or Alt and kind of breaking out, um, you know, and, and painting over things until I feel like I have something that looks pretty solid, pretty good. Okay, so this is looking like, you know, in the same style, but he has kind of a basic blank eye now. And now I'm gonna make a separate layer that's a pupil. And I'm gonna make this a little more cartoony. I'm gonna go ahead and make a new layer over here. I'm going to just make an ellipse tool. Let's make this uh, black. Actually, I'm gonna go by this black that's over here so it fits the color scheme of the character a little bit better. And let's just make kind of an oval shape like this for this character's eye. Okay, so something like that's looking pretty good to me. And I can, of course, make it bigger, smaller, add a highlight, whatever I want to if I needed to, but that's looking good. Okay, so now we've got uh, the eyeball and the pupil. So I'm going to call this plus, uh, what side is this, right pupil? And then the right eyeball over here. And I'm gonna put both of these into a group called right I and probably will want to be that a plus I um, to give it its own independence. Okay, so now I've got one eye over here that is isolated and should be working as expected. Now I probably want a blink state for this as well, right? When the character blinks. Um, an easy way for me to do this might be to duplicate my eyeball layer. I'm gonna press Command J on Mac or Control J on Windows. I'm gonna call this right blink, I'm gonna put it above everything, and then I'm gonna double click on this and go to color overlay. And instead of this, let's make it uh, the white that we have here. And hard light looks okay. I could try some different ones and see if there's something that looks better, but let's just stick with hard light for now. Um, you could try and see what works best for your character. And now this will kind of be the blink state. And I probably also want like a line going through this or something like that. So I might just pick a brush and you know, do a really basic brush um, that goes across to be like where the eyes meet. So something like that to make it look like the lids are closing. And I might make it a little ragged because that's what the rest of the character looks like. And that's going to be the blink state for this character. Obviously you could spend as much time or as little time as you want on this, but let's merge these two together. I'm gonna select them both. And again, uh, merge the layers. Where is that? Merge layers, here we go and it looks like it went over my naming, so I'm gonna call it right blink here. Okay, so that's the basic idea that I would do for the eye. I'm gonna go ahead and speed through this for the second eye and uh, move forward. All right, so speeding through the process, I now in my head group have a left plus left eye and plus right eye group. Each of these has three things inside of it, a blink state, a pupil, and plus left pupil or plus right pupil, and an eyeball, and so, all of these are kind of looking through these cutouts that I've made in the uh, in the head, and then these eyes are showing up behind it. All right, so with that done, let's save this and go to Character Animator. And now I can immediately see that my pupils are moving around as I look around with this character. So this is looking pretty good, and I have my blink states as well uh, showing up. Now I can fine tune this. If I feel like they're going a little bit too far to the side, I can go into my uh, eye gaze over here and camera strength is set to 100. Maybe I change that to 75 or something like that. And now they're not going all the way to the edge. They're going a little bit um, in, uh, to the side of it. And that's gonna look a little bit better. So of course you can always fine tune these different parameters, but now my character is really starting to come to life a little bit more, right? With the blinks and the pupil movements, I've got a little bit more expressiveness. Now the mouth, this can potentially, depending on the type of character you have, be a kind of tricky part, right? Because, um, you know, for a typical character animator mouth, you might go for one of our free resources. Uh, so I'm just on the character animator examples page. I click resources. I can download this mouth pack that I could overlay over top of my character. But if I'm being honest, I don't think that mouth is gonna look really good just, you know, superimposed on top of this character. Um, I'm thinking that the nutcracker jaw might be a better use for this particular character to have this jaw kind of move up and down. Now, depending on your character, it might be different. You might have a beak or, you know, a fish with a side view, uh, you know, 
I could do 20 tutorials and over 20 different types of mouse shapes, but for this particular character that has an open expression like this, I think the nutcracker jaw is gonna be the best way to go. So again, I'm gonna do a little bit of Photoshop surgery here. I've got my main head part here. I'm just gonna take out the body for a second so I can see this a little bit better. And I'm going to take the bottom jaw and I'm gonna cut it out again using the polygonal lasso tool um, to be its own jaw layer. So let's go ahead and cut this out, going around the edges, trying to get as best I can, and then closing it at the end, and that's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna press Command X on Mac, Control X on Windows, and then um, press Command Shift V, or uh, Control Shift V on Windows to paste it into place. So now what I've done is isolated this jaw. Now this by itself looks terrible. This is not looking that great, right? So what I wanna do is put it behind first the um, in my layers group. I want my head in front of it. I'm gonna call this plus jaw. Um, and that's gonna automatically tag it as a jaw when it comes back into character animator. And now what I wanna do is kind of extend this a little bit more. And uh, so when it comes down, it's gonna be uh, you know, not as uh, not as isolated, not have a gap showing up behind it. So what I can do with this is again, with the edge here, I'm just gonna kind of go up and around something like this. And let's go around the edge like this. And I could just like paint this black if I really wanted to, but I'm just gonna use our friend Generative Fill here and try this as a starting point to see if it gets me kind of close. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna play around with my variations over here and see if one looks a little bit better. Oh, I like this one a lot better because it's darker. And I think as I move these, you know, in the character talking, I probably want um, this to be uh, looking darker in the background. So I might play around with some uh, clone stamping to make this look darker uh, and more consistent. But for now and our purposes, I think this is looking pretty good. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is combine these two, again, merge them by selecting them both and going to merge layers. And we're gonna, again, call this plus jaw. Okay, now you'll notice as it's moving, if I get to a certain threshold, I might see some gaps over here and I don't want that. So to isolate that, I'm just gonna make an extra layer over here that's just plain black. So I'm just gonna go here and around and we're just gonna fill that in with the paint bucket tool and make that black. And now when my jaw moves up and down and it you know kind of goes a little bit too far, it's going to be okay. Um, it's gonna look all right. So let's start it in a decent position, something like this. Maybe like that as its starting position is looking pretty good to me. Uh, let's bring the body back in. Let's save and let's go into character animator. So something is happening by default. As I'm talking, the mouth is moving up and down um, based on lip sync jaw movement. And this is set by selecting my character, going into the lip sync parameter over here and changing jaw movement. So right now it's set to 100%. If I change this to 50, it's gonna be a little bit more subtle. So this is actually looking pretty good. Like this is looking better than I thought. I kind of forgot that this was going to happen when I brought it in. Um, so this is actually looking pretty nice. However, it is a little bit more stilted, right? It's kind of, as I say a word, the, thing, the, the jaw is kind of just warping from place to place and uh, maybe not looking as, as fluid as I might want. So I could do, uh, go into, let's change this jaw movement to, uh, to zero actually, not negative 397, what am I doing here? And let's go back into rig mode for my character. And at the top level here, I'm gonna add a new nutcracker jaw behavior. And so coming back in, this is already looking a lot smoother. So as it's, it's moving up and down as I'm talking, and right now I have both camera input and audio input uh, as, as um, methods of bringing it in as inputs, I could turn this off and make it you know just audio, for example. So now just the audio movement is happening and it doesn't care about my camera jaw movement at all. And then I can change the audio flappiness parameter, by the way, Great property name, audio flappiness. I mean, what other product has an audio flappiness? It, it's, I love it. Okay, so let's change this and I can make this really high, but then the jaw might look a little too detached. 
And again, if I make it too small, then it's gonna be, or negative even, it's gonna to be too subtle. So I like starting with 100%, that's looking pretty good, and depending on my mic setup and what I'm doing, I might want to move that a little bit more or less to make my character come to life a little bit more or less. All right, now that I'm pretty happy with how the head is looking, I'm gonna move on to the body. And uh, the two things I wanna deal with here are the arms, number one, and then this tail giving a little bit of dynamic movement to it. So again, depending on what character you create, yours might look totally different, but that's okay. I think these same basic principles may apply to different things you want to be able to drag or move around. All right, so I'm gonna collapse the head group here and I'm just going to have the body and what I'm gonna do is isolate each of the arms. Typically, I want my arms to be their own separate parts. So let's go ahead and select this. And what I'm gonna do is go to the arm and kind of make an area like this around the arm where I think it would basically be connecting to the shoulder uh, area. So something like this. It's not perfect, but it's gonna be close enough. Okay, so let's again cut this out. Command X on Mac, Control X on Windows, and then Command Shift V on Mac or Control Shift V on Windows to paste it into place. Now again, you see the faint line that shows up here. I'm just gonna press right a couple of times to uh, move that out of the way. And then because this arm's going to kind of twist and move, I may want something behind it to be, you know, the rest of the shirt. So I'm gonna do my typical thing where I'm just going to kind of make a space here around the shirt area and let's Connect that, let's make sure it's on this layer here and let's do a generative fill and this should fill in that shirt area behind my arm. Okay, so now we got this kind of extra area here and then my arm can show over top of that. So that's looking pretty good. Now, this arm's gonna give me a little bit of trouble because it is uh, currently in kind of a weird state where it's on the hip. And we know with character animator characters, typically you want them to be more in an A-shaped position. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit more uh, to make this one work, but I think I can do it. So let's go ahead and select my character again, uh, the body group, and I'm going to again select, start selecting my character, and now I'm going to go in with more fine detail around where I think this hand would be, this claw. It kind of looks like he's almost wearing gloves, like he doesn't have claws, so maybe I would add claws later on, but okay. That's looking pretty good, and then let's go around, and maybe something like this is how I would want it to connect. Okay, same story to story. Command X to take it out. Um, there's a little bit of extra stuff here that I can erase, I don't need, and then Command Shift V to put it in, right a couple times, okay. So the first thing is, let's fill in these gaps that we've got over here, so I'm going to take uh, this area uh, where the basically the, the pants are and this area here I'm just gonna add a little bit of an extra bump uh, around it something like this okay and that's looking good let's do generative fill for both of these generate okay and I can play around with different variations but overall this first one is looking great I'm gonna go ahead and merge this with this body and call it BG Again, I just uh, select things and you can do merge layers or press Command E on Mac or Control E on Windows. Okay, so now we've got our two, uh, and let's actually do this as well for the other one. So now I've got three layers. I've got my background, my one arm, and my other arm. Now, to get this arm and that outstretched A position like I want, I'm gonna select it and go to Edit, Puppet Warp. What this is gonna do is put kind of this warping all around uh, my arm. And so what I could do is put two points at least, I'm gonna put three points actually, and then drag this out like this. And basically what I'm doing is determining where this thing is going to bend and how it's going to bend. So maybe something like this. And you can add more points if you want to, to add more points where you can uh, you know, add things. Um, but overall, I'm feeling good about how this is looking. I'm gonna remove that one. I held down Option over top of something to click to get rid of it, but that didn't look very good, so let's try that. And something like that is looking pretty good, pretty okay, so let's press Enter. It's never gonna be 100% perfect, um, but overall, this is looking better than what I had before. Now, there is a bit of a, 
uh, you know, very clear divide here where the arm is connecting because as I twist things, the pixels aren't gonna line up as well. So to make that look a little bit better, I'm gonna go to my erase tool and just kind of erase a little bit here um, on some of these areas just to make it blend in a little bit better. Um, and you'll notice like this isn't lining up exactly right either. So I might take my arm and just kind of move it in a little bit until it feels right. And you can kind of finesse this as you want. But overall, that's looking pretty good to me, um, how it looks. I might, this looks a little bit too bent now actually. So I might come in here and like kind of shave off some part of the arm here, uh, something like that to make it look a little bit more, um, like what I'm wanting and maybe come in a little bit here as well. So if you're doing this kind of puppet warp thing, you might just need to finesse it a little bit, but overall, this is looking a lot better for uh, a movable arm that I've got. Now I'm gonna want these arms to be independent, so I'm gonna go ahead and name them. I'm gonna say plus uh, right arm and plus left arm to name each of these as I want. And then finally, let's deal with this tail here. So I'm gonna, again, go to my handy dandy polygonal tool, I am going to select this tail and I am going to cut it out, Command X, and let's put it in Command V, um, and I'm gonna move it actually behind the character, behind the body, uh, it's still in the body group though, and I'm gonna move it like up here, something like that. And I'm gonna call this plus tail. Okay, so now I have all the basic parts of my character in a way that I like, that I think is gonna work pretty well. So let's go ahead and save this and bring it into Character Animator. All right, so when I first come in, uh, my character's looking pretty good, but there's no interaction with the arms yet. The tail isn't moving. Um, and if I move too far, I'm gonna notice that the arms can kind of feel like they get detached a little bit. So there's a little bit of extra rigging that I have to do here. So let's go back into rig mode and let's take this one thing at a time. So let's start with the arms. I'm gonna take the origin of my arm, which is in the middle of my layer here, and I'm gonna drag it until it connects with my base of my character here, which in this case is the BG layer that I'm trying to connect to. So here, it's connecting like this, and then I'm gonna go down to this dragger tool down here, uh, this little compass looking thing. I'm gonna add it to the hand here, and then finally I'm gonna go to the stick tool, this uh, little bracket looking thing, and I'm gonna add a stick for the forearm, add a little bit of space for the elbow and put the bicep there. Let's do the same thing with the left arm over here. I'm gonna to go to my selection. I'm going to click on this origin and drag it to where it connects. I'm going to add a dragger in the hand and then I'm going to add here uh, for the forearm and the bicep. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. And let's go to record mode and see how this is looking. So now I can drag my arms and it's, uh, you know, it's pretty stretchy right now, uh, but it does have exactly what I'm wanting. I do have the ability to drag the arms around. To give it a little bit of extra refinement, let's add the limb IK behavior. And this is gonna give us a little bit of better elbow bend and control over things. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra handle here in the elbow. And let's call this the elbow. I'm gonna select my draggable handle, call this wrist, and then I'm gonna select the origin and call this shoulder. Let's do the exact same thing with the left arm over here. Let's do uh, select this left arm uh, origin over here, call that the left shoulder. Uh, add a new handle, blank handle here, and call that the left elbow. And then select our pre-existing draggable and call that left wrist. Now when I go back, I'm gonna get a little bit of extra elbow bend that looks a little bit nicer for my character and it's bending without that stretchiness that I had before. So overall, this kind of setup is looking pretty nice. Now I can make him wave, I can make him put his you know, hands on his tummy, something like that. I've got a few different options there. So little steps that I can take to just refine the arm movement a little bit more. Now for the tail, I'm gonna go ahead and select it. It is already independent, it has the crown icon on it, which means it can move on its own. I'm gonna drag the origin where it connects to the character, and then I'm going to click this dangle tool down here, this little pendulum looking thing, and add it to the end of the tail. When I go into uh, record mode now, you'll see the tail is starting to move around. If I don't like the how it's moving, I can go into my physics parameter here and change things under the dangle category. So let's change the stiffness to be kind of a little bit different. Well, that's too much. 
<laughs> 59. I can go really low if I wanted to. Um, but let's go back to 100 and maybe we can make the uh, something like 85 or something like that instead. And maybe that's the amount of bounce that I want. I can add more parameters here. I could add more sticks inside it if I wanted it to move around. I could even go in here and the tail select it instead of a weld mode at a hinge mode instead, which is going to make it a little bit more droopy like that. Now I can see the edge of it here, so I probably don't want it exactly like that. But if I played around with these parameters, maybe I can get a stiffness or squashiness or something like that that's going to work pretty well. In general, though, I think weld is probably the best way to go with this. And then I can play around with these parameters until they get the quality of animation that I'm looking for. In this case, I might even move this tail reverse it, flip it around so it's kind of on the ground and bouncing around or something like that. But for the purposes of this tutorial, this is pretty good. All right. So within the course of, you know, half an hour or something like that, I've taken this character that was a completely static flat image and I've now turned it into an animated character. So now as I talk, the mouth is moving. As I blink, as I look around, the eyes are moving. I have control over the arms to be able to do different movements and wave and all sorts of different things. And I've got a little extra bounce with the tail and adding some physics to the character. This is a great first step and way to get your character alive. And now from here, you could add triggers. You could add um, other behaviors that you want to do. Add the eyebrows, add physics in the fur and the top of the hair and all of that stuff to get the character as lively as you would want it to be. But hey, for just starting out, this is a great first step. And right now I've got a talking tiger that was not an animated character um, you know, 30 minutes ago. So. It takes a lot of manual Photoshop work to get it to this stage, and I'm hopeful then in the future, you will be able to create layered PSD files um, from AI tools and, like Firefly. And if there is that in the future, that would be awesome because that's going to save you a lot of time to be able to say, OK, now I don't have to do all that surgery and cut out and clone stamp and all of that stuff. You can just have these layers separately. Now, you could try your luck with this. I've tried Firefly searches where I search just for a cartoon eyeball or cartoon mouth or cartoon beak or hand, uh, you know, that sort of stuff and kind of Frankenstein a character together piece by piece. Uh, my results have not been that great, if I'm being honest. I think it's better to start with one thematic character and kind of go through it and uh, do your own thing like that piece by piece. But that's how I did it. Um, I think it works pretty well, and I hope this is a helpful way for you to start creating your own characters using Firefly and Character Animator. Now, if you're an Adobe Illustrator, your life might be a little bit easier because uh, you might be able to create a character that does have some isolated parts. That's the nice thing about the new text to vector graphic beta feature in Illustrator. So I've got a 1920 by 1080 scene that I've made here in Adobe Illustrator 2024. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that the subject is uh, over here in the properties panel is set to subject and not scene icon or pattern. Um, and I'm just going to type in a prompt here. So I wrote a cute cartoon frog wearing a t-shirt and jeans. Let's go ahead and generate this. Awesome. OK, and now I've got this really cool looking frog character and I've got a few different variations that I could play around with. Um, I like this one because the arms are already out. That's going to make my life so much easier. And the nice thing is these are all pieces that I can play around with. So I can you know, select and delete certain things using the Illustrator tools I already know how to use. And um, things like, for example, the head being isolated. Check this out. The head is already, luckily for this character, isolated, and I've already got a piece that I can, you know, start to work with here. And the body, same thing with the arms. I'm gonna have to do a little bit of surgery to get them out because um, they are connected to the, uh, the this shirt here. But overall, um, a lot of these pieces are already isolated for me. So when I'm doing the eyeballs, for example, and the pupils, I've already got my pupils basically isolated here that I can move around and play around with and have ready to go. Um, the mouth for this character, I would probably just do like an open mouth. You know, I would probably make my own mouth set for this character and make like an open ah, what that would look like and maybe an ooh and an e, maybe, you know, four or five different mouths to make this character work pretty well. So with my layers panel out here, I would select my character, select the parts that I want. I'm just kind of double clicking until I get exactly what I want. Um, here, it looks like I got most of the head except for the eyeball. So I'm gonna hold down shift to also select those. 
that's looking pretty good. And now I'm going to uh, uh, press Command X to cut this. I'm going to make a new group. Actually, let's go back to my main area here, and I'm going to create a new group, a new uh, layer, I should say, called Head, and Command Shift V to do it in place. And there is my head group. And now here is my body. And now I can make a new layer called plus frog. And let's put both my head and my body inside of there. Make sure the head is in top of the body and so on and so forth. And now I can start to dig into my eyes, make more groups, make more mouths, all of that stuff, just like I showed in, um, in Photoshop. And if you're more comfortable in Illustrator, you can just follow the exact same methods that I just showed to create a compelling character. All right, so I hope this was a helpful first step into the world of taking AI characters and turning them into 2D animated characters in Character Animator. Obviously, there is so much more that you could do with this, and I'm really excited to see what you all make with this type of stuff. So please, if you make stuff using this method or anything else, use hashtag Character Animator when sharing on social media so myself and the rest of the team can check it out. And if you're running into any trouble or running any questions or I went too fast through any of the sections or whatever, the best place to get help is the official character animator forums. All right, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching and have fun.